Hello, I am Dr. Brittany Panico, board certified rheumatologist in the Phoenix, Arizona area at Summit Rheumatology, here today to talk to you about ankylosing spondylitis and non radiographic axillary spondyloarthritis. These conditions are particularly important for people of college and grad school age to be aware of because that is the phase in life that we typically diagnose this condition. So if you're someone in your 20s or early 30s or even into your 40s who has had a history of back pain, primarily low back pain or even neck pain that's not related to a traumatic accident, then it's important that you may consider something like ankylosing spondylitis. Sometimes these conditions cluster in families because they can be genetically linked by a gene marker called HLA B27. So if you have a parent or a first degree relative with ankylosing spondylitis, then I do encourage you to be evaluated as well. So ankylosing spondylitis is a condition that involves inflammation of the spine, particularly the sacroiliac joints in the back of the hip area, and can progress up the spine into the middle back and neck potentially. And it typically involves progressive stiffness that results in decreased range of motion of your back. So when you were young, it may have been really easy to be mobile and exercise, and you could have been very flexible, but then over time that may change. So patients in their 20s and early 30s start to find things like bending over to tie their shoes a little bit more difficult unless they stretch and really get their body going throughout the day. One of the other hallmark features is that when you wake up feeling more stiff and exercise makes this better. So if you're somebody who's developed an exercise or stretching routine, particularly in the morning, because that's the only way that you can get yourself going, then that can be a sign of ankylosing spondylitis as well. Some patients will have given up certain things because they no longer feel they can do it comfortably or they get too stiff to be able to exercise in the, the way that they had before. For example, if you're an avid runner or CrossFit trainer and you have to modify that behavior because your flexibility decreases or your endurance decreases because of back or neck pain, then an evaluation may benefit you as well. If you've developed joint stiffness, and this can be periodic, it doesn't have to necessarily be all the time. Sometimes swelling of a digit or toe may last a couple days or a week, and oftentimes ibuprofen or Aleve help make it better. So sometimes we are treating ourselves, not specifically knowing what's going on under the surface. Sometimes this can be related to psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis as well. So if you're somebody with psoriasis, check out my previous video about psoriatic arthritis. Some patients may also have a condition of inflammation of the eyes called uveitis. So if you've been diagnosed with uveitis by an ophthalmologist and have back pain or neck pain, then that may be related to ankylosing spondylitis as well. So I encourage you to be evaluated by a rheumatologist if you're somebody who seems to fit this clinical scenario. We are more than happy to help you at Summit Rheumatology in Gilbert, Arizona and seeing new patients as early as next week. We can be found at summitrheumatology.com under the contact us section. You can leave an email or email us directly at info at summitrheumatology.com. I hope this helps and we'll see you next time on another episode of Back to School Basics. Thank you.